I think every one of us is ready to go. So it's 4 o'clock. Uh, it's Tuesday, December the 4th, and I'll call this meeting to order. I do need a motion to adopt the agenda as it's, as it's stated. Paul's made the motion. I need a second. Chad, second. All in favor? 7-0. Uh, we also need a motion to go into closed session pursuant of North Carolina General Statute 143 dash 138 to consult with our board attorney in order to preserve the attorney client privilege uh, and to consult with the board attorney for confidential matters. Do uh, I have would you a add in to discuss personnel matters protected by 115C uh, 321 at 2nd ETSUQ? To add that, as our board attorney has what shared she <laughs> what she said. <laughs> yes, that would be great. Do I have a motion to go into close? No move. Chad, close. Second. Wendy, all in favor? 7-0. We are now into closed session. Thank you. We are reconvening our December the 4th um, meeting, and I have a special presentation. I'm going to deviate from the, the agenda just a second. I would like Joanne, Eddie, John, uh, Mary, and Butch to come out front for just a second. The tech team. Thank you each for allowing us to do that. We do appreciate our technology team. At this time, we will have our invocation. If you will join me, please. As we gather this evening, I ask this board to be mindful of the business we are about to undertake. We are thankful for everyone in attendance this evening. Father, we are thankful for the opportunity to govern and the freedoms that we enjoy. We always pause to remember the students, faculty members, and families in our system who are facing challenging illnesses or even other challenges. Our positive thoughts are with this group of folks. As always, we seek wisdom to make the best decision for the students and the citizens of Davie County. Peace be with each of you. Thank you. At this time, I would like Brownie Troop 2146 from Farmington Community Center to come forward to lead us in the pledge.
Thank you again, young ladies. You did a great job. Board, at this time, we have two sets of minutes. We have the work session business meeting of October 23rd, and we have the called special meeting of November the 15th. Um, do I have a motion to accept these minutes? Paul makes the motion to accept. Do I have a second? Chad seconds. Any discussion? Any additions? Seeing none, all in favor? 7 0. Now we'll move to our board report, Dr. Hartness. I'm having such a big time, I'm forgetting to do things. Thank you. The important dates coming up in December are um, we had our iPad training, as I said today, and also um, we will begin with uh, some special meetings, and that is tomorrow, December the 5th. We will be dropping in at the multipurpose room at Davy High, uh, talking to uh, the architects and having discussion with the Davy High staff. On the 7th is a busy day for us. At 7.30, uh, Clint and Carol will be attending the Chamber Legislative Update. Paul and I, Dr. Harkness, will be attending a meeting in Greensboro, uh, where South Davy will receive an award. On December the 10th, we have DARE graduation and a four to six drop-in for the board. Also, on the 11th, we have a DARE graduation at Moxville. On the 13th, a DARE graduation at Coolamy. And then we get more training for board docs. On the 14th, we will be touring Reagan High School, Walkertown High School, and the Career Center in Winston-Salem. On the 18th, is the robotics competition at South Davy. And now a day that a lot of people will be waiting for, that's early release on the 21st, so happy holiday kids. I know you're gonna enjoy that, that day. Uh, and then our next board meeting will be um, January the 8th at six. Also on the 7th that day at 7.15, we are leaving to go visit Rocky River High School. So we are very busy for the next month and coming into January, and I thank everyone for being here, and please come back to the January meeting. We'd love to have you. Dr. Hartness. Thank you, Madam Chair. I um, have several things that I want to cover with staff and, and parents. I'm sure will be interested in some of these as well tonight. But I uh, hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving break, and I know students were on just a short list of days before we're out for Christmas, but a lot of productive things happening in our schools right now. I want to thank the board for coming early this afternoon to learn uh, about using iPads as we conduct business, and we'll do some more training on the 13th. Thank our technology team again for putting that together. Uh, I, I appreciate this board being willing to model the use of uh, technology for our staff and students. That means a lot to us, and we appreciate that. Our last meeting in November was the first that we televised, and just as a reminder, uh, board meetings now will be televised the week after our meetings on cable channel 25 if you have Yadtel and Time Warner channel 6, and those are Tuesdays and Saturdays at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, again, another kudos to our technology team for making that possible, and I also want to thank um, Neil Smith, who is with the IT department with the County of Davie, who have helped us uh, make this possible for our community. Since our last meeting in November, our staff has been extremely busy working with our architects. We've had uh, several meetings with staff. Today there were meetings all day at Davie County High School, providing an opportunity for our staff to give feedback to the architectural firm um, for one comprehensive high school for our community, for all students and all programs. And it was pretty exciting to see some of our students coming through today and giving feedback as well and seeing that process and seeing what their teachers were involved in and administrators. Uh, we'll be wrapping up tomorrow morning. Uh, the architects will be back there talking with staff and I've invited the board to drop in between 11 and one and you'll be able to see the ideas that have been generated over the last day and a half by our staff and students. Um, our architects are gonna use the feedback they received today and tomorrow and feedback from our administrative team and work with our staff over the next month to come up with a and, and present a schematic design for a comprehensive high school. We hope to finish that up by the end of January as well as have cost estimates for that project. And our goal board is to bring that to you in a draft format February the 5th at our February board meeting. 
In addition to working on the schematic design for the high school, our architects are working with us to develop a repurposing plan for the existing high school campus and cost estimates for that repurposing. We've invited a group of over 25 people together on December the 19th to come together and discuss how we might use that existing high school campus for both the school district and for the community if we were able to build a new high school campus. So we're looking at all the possibilities there for use uh, using some of the newest buildings on campus as well as the possibility of demoing some of the oldest and repurposing that property for community use. Again, that process will wrap up in January and we hope to bring you some ideas and some cost estimates at our February the 5th meeting. Uh, Chairman Owens also mentioned that we're setting up several visits on December the 14th. We'll be at Reagan High School, Walkertown High School, and the Career Center in Forsyth County. We'll be looking at those three projects that were designed and built by Walter Robs Callahan Pierce, our architectural firm. We're traveling to Charlotte on January the 7th to take a look at Rocky River High School that was uh, constructed and designed by Little Diversified. So we'll be looking at the design elements, the construction, building materials, and different methods that are used in, in modern high schools throughout those visits. And we'll try to incorporate and um, use some of those things in our planning with our current architectural firm. So this is moving pretty rapidly. I've been very pleased with the progress we're making so far with Walter Robbs and Wesley and Clark have been a pleasure to work with. We've had several events over the past month. I know the board has been involved in, I've been involved in that I wanna highlight. We had a number of Veterans Day events in November and our schools did a fabulous job of honoring our veterans. And uh, I just, hats off, Mr. Mr. Whitaker, I know that the things that we're doing in, throughout our school system to honor the people that have put us in the position in America that we're in and, and, and fought for our freedoms um, are really special. Lunch at Cornatser Elementary in November. The board uh, came out for lunch there, and I think those visits are very valuable for you to be able to see what's going on during the school day and life in a school cafeteria, too. So that was uh, a nice visit, and Dr. Wren and her staff were, were hosting us there. We had a very well-attended early college open house in November. That school was really on the right track. We have a fine facility that we uh, can proudly give tours of at the early college. I'm just really proud that we're what we're doing at the early college. Um, I mentioned to some of you I had the pleasure of handing out medals to about 150 of our students who were part of the Go Far running program and were part of the first annual Turkey Derby 5K a few weeks uh, ago on Saturday. And we actually had one of our school board members running, so go far, Mr. Junker. <laughs> um, but it was really exciting to see uh, all of our students out there and I want to thank our teachers and our volunteers that work with all of our students in the Go Far Running programs. Uh, I know at Coolamy and at Moxville and at Shady Grove and Ellis they all have Go Far Running clubs and that's pretty exciting for them to be learning healthy habits at a very young age and to see some students in their first 5k and running in a, a competitive mode so pretty neat. I'm going to give you an update on some meetings that I was in last week. Um, I was down in Raleigh for several days at the superintendent's quarterly meeting. In addition to getting some updates from our state superintendent and Department of Public Instruction, I had the pleasure of um, spending a little over an hour with Speaker of the House Tom Tillis. He came and met with a group of superintendents on our executive board and talked about what he anticipated in this next legislative session as the legislators come back to Raleigh after Christmas. Um, I'm encouraged that Speaker Tillis would sit down and listen to what some of our concerns were from school systems and give us some ideas of some things that he is thinking about and the legislature is thinking about. Uh, he, does, he, he indicated he did not see revenues getting worse, but he uh, was hopeful that we would see some increase or revenue enhancements in this next session. He committed that the House of Representatives would be wrapping up their work by May 30th, and he said, if not by May 30th, by May 35th. So <laughs> their intentions are to wrap up the long session by the end of May, and that's good for public schools because that means we can react and plan to the decisions that are made in Raleigh. Um, the only way we can make our public schools better and to shape law that will shape our public schools in the future is if we have open dialogue and conversation like Speaker Tillis invited that night, and I was, uh, impressed and, and appreciative that he was setting a good example of open communication with the superintendents across the state. So I was very encouraged by the conversation. 
at our superintendents quarterly, we met with the state superintendent and the Department of Public Instruction and talked about things that are affecting both our teachers and our students across the state. Um, this is the first year of new curriculum, the Common Core standards and the essential standards that our teachers have been preparing for. Where our high school students are hearing about measures of student learning or MSLs and common exams. Those are benchmark tests in, in courses and grade levels where there are not EOGs and EOC tests already. So we talked a lot about those and the MSLs were designed to link student performance to teacher performance and teacher evaluations. And we said very strongly to our leadership in Raleigh that this is a new process and we feel like we need to slow down just a minute and let's look at how these new MSLs are working with our students, look at validity and reliability of those tests before we start linking those to our teacher evaluations. Um, so I know that Race to the Top required us to, to populate some of our standards within the teacher evaluation, but our request as superintendents on behalf of our teachers and staff was let's slow down for just a minute and let's take a look at how our students perform in this environment with these new tests and new curriculum and let's make this a, a quality product at the end of the day. Um, we also know that last year in the legislature, the legislature passed a law that would give every school in the state a grade, A through F. And while we're very supportive of making a accountability program that's transparent and easy to understand among the public, we have some concerns about how do you arrive at a single letter grade for an entire school when you look at all the measures that we have in place. So we're working together and hope to work together with the legislature to define how you operationalize a letter grade for a school so that it is an accurate reflection for our public and our parents. Um, so those are a few things that we talked about as well. There was a lot of discussion about some of the new law that, that was put in place right at the end of the budget cycle last year. One was performance pay. We hear a lot about performance pay for teachers and you know treating teachers more like a performance pay that would be applied in the business world and again the superintendents are working together and trying to work with the legislature to look at how do we develop a model that is fair and equitable across the state and the legislature finds themselves in a really interesting position because they've been very publicly opposed to more tests for students and I'm sure our students are opposed to a lot more tests and high stakes tests for students but to have a performance pay plan that's linked to student performance, you have to have tests. So my hope is as we begin these conversations and have these conversations as how we operationalize what has been passed in the legislature, we'll take the two extremes and come together and come, come together with a really good product that will reward teachers. The other piece to performance pay that we all know about is how do you pay for that? because we removed ABC bonuses several years ago. So there's a lot of questions about that and we'll just kind of have to see where that goes uh, as the legislature reconvenes. We also anticipate that there will be some voucher bills in the legislature in the spring. And again, I'm not sure where the revenue would come for uh, using public money for private education, but we'll just have to see and follow that and um, see where we go with that. Also, our schools will anticipate and teachers and staff will anticipate some new tools available next school year. NCYS, you've heard about, that's our student information management system. We'll also have a new instructional improvement system and the combination of those two will be a new product that will be called Home Base. And Home Base will be a place where teachers and administrators can go and get student information and data about our students to help them along the way. So we'll be hearing more about home base in the next uh, couple months. I say all that to, to say that there's one thing we can be sure of, change. And I will assure you as our staff talk about these things that are coming to us from the federal government or from Raleigh, we want to make decisions that are in the best interest of, of students. And we will pledge to you that we, we will represent Davie County on behalf of our teachers and our students. And I'll do my best to keep you update and informed as to what's coming our way and how specifically those things will affect Davie County Schools. Um, enough for legislative stuff. Last Friday, Bill Harrison, the chairman of the State Board of Education, came to Davie County. He visited with me and um, a couple of our board members at Coolamie Elementary School, at Davie Early College High School, and at Davie County High School. Uh, thank Clint and Barbara for joining us on that tour. Do uh, Dr. Harrison was very complimentary of our school system and 
um, extends his congratulations to each of you and our parents and students for a, a job well done here in Davie County. This Friday morning, we will have a celebration breakfast in Greensboro, and we will honor not only South Davie Middle School, but we'll have a chance for um, our vocal students at Davie High in the Madrigals class, as well as a quintet will be performing at this breakfast, and it will be a breakfast for principals and school board members and teachers and other folks from 15 school districts in the Piedmont Triad. So it'll be a chance for our school system to be the showcase performing uh, group at that meeting on Friday morning. So we're pretty excited about that, and I want to say thank you to Ms. Snow and Mr. Jemison for their hard work in preparing our students for that performance. Um, the rest of December and January are extremely busy. We have a lot of holiday celebrations. We have a lot of things going on in the school system. We have three D.A.R.E. graduations coming up. We continue to work on our facility issues, but we're also working on our draft of the strategic plan. So we're still continuing that and hope to bring you a draft pretty soon on that. We're wrapping up the process of redesigning our district logo and tagline. The one that you see here was developed 10 or 12 years ago. So we're working on that and that will come together in January. And we hope to also have Mary Orr at the stand in February to show you a new website for our school district. So all these things are coming together um, at, a, at one time and a lot of exciting things happening in Davie County Schools. I'll be quiet for now because we have some exciting recognitions tonight and a lot of students and parents here want to thank you for being here and I wish each and every one of you a very safe and happy holiday season. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Harkness. Um, Stephanie, it's now for the uh, staff and student recognitions, please. I think I'm up first. Board members, Dr. Hartness, <laughs> members of the audience, we have several recognitions tonight and it's wonderful to see such a large group and um, a wonderful time to celebrate. At this time, Dr. Hartness has a special recognition for South Davie. Thank you, Stephanie. Me again on this side this time. Um, I'd like for Keith Whitaker, Kim Stacy, and Miranda Jester to come up. Miranda with us? Okay, Randy didn't make it. Okay, um, like I said, on Friday morning, we will be honoring South Davie Middle School as our signature school for Davie County. And uh, each of the smaller districts in our region will honor one school, and the larger districts will honor two schools. And I want to share with you uh, just a couple things about South Davie that makes them our signature school for 2012-13. South Davie Middle School met all of its measure, annual measurable objectives, 25 out of 25, remarkable increase of 13.2% in proficiency in both math and reading in the past 12 months, resulting in 86.3% student proficiency rate. They received a recognition as School of Distinction, making the third year that they've accomplished that level of performance. The primary strength of South Davie Middle is the consistently talented and dedicated teachers and its powerful sense of community. Using innovation and technology consistently, these teachers demonstrate on a daily basis how to foster a love of learning in their students with achievement scores steadily rising as a result. With close to 70% of South Davie Middle students relying on free and reduced lunch, strategic provisions are made for students who struggle academically, including 18 focused, carefully structured remediation settings for reading and math at least 30 minutes every day. Students are taking ownership for their learning and their citizenship as part of the South Davie community. For the past three years, student-led academic conferences with parents have been held quarterly. A model PBIS school, South Davie Middle School, has been named the PBIS Exemplar School for the last two years. Clubs are active and boost high participation from student government to math counts, South Davie student boosters, junior civitans, fellowship of Christian athletes, Beta Club, Art Club, Robotics Competition, Science for Tomorrow Club, and Culinary Arts Club. Although South Davie students may have limited resources on their own, it's heartwarming to see just how giving these students are. Collecting over 5,000 cans of food for a local charity, Storehouse for Jesus, raising $2,400 for Hope Grows, a mission in Sudan, and most recently raising $3,000 for Big Brothers and Big Sisters to help struggling young people across our county. Um, I will tell you that there are two fine administrators standing behind me. I'm extremely proud of them and all of our staff at South Davie Middle 
and help me in joining, uh, join me in, in helping us to recognize South Davy Middle School as our signature school for Next, we have Tom Evans, who will um, recognize the maintenance person of the year. Good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, choosing the maintenance person of the year is a very hard job. Uh, we have a small maintenance department. We have a very skilled, very committed maintenance department. And I hope everyone here is aware of that. We're a small. We do take care of most all the school needs. Um, Jeremy stood out this year because he's just a picture perfect employee. He's punctual, he's committed. Uh, it doesn't matter what the job is, he says, let's go do it. Uh, just a great person to work with. Jeremy is a licensed electrician, uh, went to Forsyth Tech. He's been with the school system for seven years, I believe it is. Um, and basically, the wonderful part about Jeremy uh, and his family is with his parents and his wife's time in with the school system, uh, they can count for well over 75 years of service to David <coughs> County Schools. Jeremy, come forward, please. Don Howard will recognize the custodial team of the year. I want to thank the board for recognizing the custodial team of the year. It, it's like Tom said, it is a hard decision figuring out which one it's going to be because all of them is unique in their own way. But last year, this year, it's South Davy Middle School. They've overcome a few battles, and me and Keith Whitaker have overcome a few battles. But uh, they've done a wonderful job, and I want to thank y'all for recognizing them. I want to thank them right now and honor them. Have each one of them come up. It's Angie Doolin. <laughs> Angela Crotz. <laughs> Paul's not here, is he? Carl Robinson's not here. Billy Greer. And Carolyn Sloan. Thank you.
Following in the same line, board, we'd like to uh, uh, recognize some of our students at this time, and I've asked our county athletic director, <clears throat> Mr. Barry Whitlock, to join me. And uh, we've got some pretty special uh, teams here, as you can well see. And we like it when we pack it out, and there's one of them back there waving at me, so I think Jacob's trying to distract me here. But we have uh, two uh, teams from North Davie, and we also have a team from South Davie. And, of course, as you all know, that they did not just compete against each other as it was it's a conference that we're in and so we shall say in, in at least three sports this year that uh, we are by far the best in our conference so at this time we would we'll like to recognize the, the North Davy women's tennis team and then I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Whitlock if he would uh, to share a few things about uh, North Davy tennis and then we'll kind of orchestrate getting them to move through and then we'll bring the next North Davy team up and and so forth so what do we have up front? Is this the tennis? Perfect. See, you're wonderful. Mr. Whitlock. Okay, if, uh, ladies, y'all like to walk up here right now. Uh, our ladies uh, tennis team coached by Miss uh, Lauren Skidmore, her first year coaching. Uh, they ended up the season with a 6-0 and record and went in our conference. I'd like to congratulate all you ladies and Coach Skidmore. Job well done. At this time, uh, North Davy Volleyball, if you'd come up front. I think she's got almost her whole team. Uh, North Davy Volleyball team is coached by Ms. Trish King, assistant uh, Brittany Stewart. They went a perfect 15-0, and 0, counting the uh, conference tournament. Uh, and in volleyball in middle school, you play the best two out of three games to win. Uh, North Davy, they did not have to go to a third game. They won it. Every game they play, they did not lose a game. So congratulations. <laughs> South Davy soccer. We're here. Okay. Uh, head coach <laughs> Luis Deemer, uh, assistant coach Kathy Farabee. Uh, South Davy soccer team won the regular season as well as the, and this is Duncan Curl, one of the players, uh, that won a regular season as well as the conference tournament, finishing a perfect 10 0. So, congratulations to South Davy soccer. Good job. I'm glad to see you out. You're doing good. Must be good. 
Ms. Perry. Great job. Absolutely. Again, we'd like to congratulate all of those, our students and parents. I, I have two children in school, and so I understand. And girls, my daughter's on the other side of the net from that North Davy bunch. So I, I had to go home to a whole lot of talking about why they hit so hard and why they're so good. And it's okay. You keep working, and it'll get there. But they were an awesome team. All of them were awesome. And parents, I know what you put in, and it matters, I'm telling you. And they're great kids, and they're great students, and this is, this is vital to our community. So I appreciate all your support, Coach Whitlock, coaches, administration. Uh, thank you very much. Again, congratulations. Thank you for being here. Okay, at this time, if you are a holiday card winner, I would like you to come up and stand up front, please. We have a, a special presentation and Sweet summer bells all seem to say throw cuz away Christmas is here bring me the cheer to you me no dink in the fall ding dong ding dong dong this is a ding dong for ring dong caroling one to be here words of the cheer from everywhere filling the air oh how they come praising the sound for a tale tell the tone gaily the ring while people sing songs of the cheer Christmas is here
So our um, school winners were Millie Basinger, fourth grade from Coolamy Elementary, Anna Marie Sloan, fourth grade from Canancer Elementary, Sadie Ezek, fourth grade, Mottsville Elementary, Ashton Harris, fifth grade, Pinebrook Elementary, Casey Hodges, fifth grade, Shady Grove Elementary, Olivia Otto, fifth grade, from Wilmar Davy, Lily White, sixth grade, Central Davy Academy, Danielle Sanderson, 6th grade, South Davy Middle. Jordan Smith, 8th grade, William Ellis Middle. Erica Fowler, 9th grade, Central Davy Academy. And Erin um, Main from uh, the 11th grade at Davy High. Congratulations. Okay, this was very difficult for all the people who voted but we chose three of the cards to be featured on the school district Christmas card this year. And I have one of those, and it's hot off the press. So I'm going to show it to you in just a few minutes, okay? So our three winners are, if you'd come forward uh, for your $50 gift card for your artwork, Ashton Harris, congratulations. Aaron Mang from Davy High. And Danielle Sanderson. And this is the card. So this is the card that will go out to people in our community. This card will go out across the state to different people in other school districts as well. So your artwork has been published in a big way. We thank you all for your talents and sharing those with us. And uh, you'll get a copy of this card as well. Don't forget, parents and students, to pick up your artwork that's been framed that's on the table here tonight. Let's give all of our holiday art winners a big round of applause. Way to go. Way to go around. Board, we had lots of very nice recognitions, and there's one more that's not on your agenda that I'm going to do right quick, and this person doesn't know they're going to be recognized, but I'm going to ask Butch Rooney to come forward. Um, 
Butch, I stole something out of your office that I wanted to share with the board. And that's a certificate of completion for a program that Butch just finished. I'm really proud of Butch. I want to congratulate him for completing the Certified Educational Chief Technology Officers Program through the UNC School of Government. Uh, the NC Certified Education Chief Technology Officer Certification Program is a dynamic program that features two components, one for superintendents and one for technology directors. The course covers 10 months and it covers topics like strategic technology planning, communications, project management, emerging trends, risk assessment and management, acquisition of technology management, change management, leadership, security, legal issues, and financial trends, all in the field of technology, instructional and administrative technology. Again, it's a 10-month course, and Butch has spent a lot of time. I know it's been a worthwhile experience for him. He's met a lot of colleagues across the state. I'm sure he's learned a few things, but probably the people that he's been with have benefited the most by his expertise and his experience in technology. But Butch, I want to congratulate you for your leadership and your completion of this program, and now you can take that blue border and put it back in your office. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thank you. That's great. Wow, that's that's a major accomplishment, Butch. Major, major. And we really enjoyed all the children tonight. They they are starting off with the brownies. This has just been a great night. And this may be a record setting shortest board meeting in the history of Davy County Schools. Um, it's time to move to our consent agenda. We have two things on the consent agenda, and I need to add one more under personnel. And the addition is to amend, uh, to amend our consent agenda item uh, for personnel recommendation to extend Dr. Hartness's contract to June 30th, 2016. Do I have a motion to um, accept the, con to approve the consent agenda items? I'm sorry. So moved. Carol's um, first, do I have a second? Wendy, second, any discussion? All in favor of the consent agenda items, raise your hand. Seven, zero, it has approved. Next is a public address to the board. Uh, Artie, do we have anyone signed up? Uh, no, Madam Chairwoman, we do not. Okay, thank you. Committee and staff report, Jeff. You're up. Board, if you'll take a look at uh, in your packet there, and I hope you've had the opportunity to look over the uh, calendar that uh, we have presented for information. And Dr. Hartness and I were talking today, and um, we decided, I, th I thought it was a wonderful idea, just to give you kind of a, a summary of uh, the challenges with putting together a school calendar. Matter of fact, there's, there's still someone in the audience that often grabs me and asks me questions, and I'm not going to bring this pro point this person out, but why this, why that, why this? I said, why don't you just join us on this committee? And this person was wonderful enough to do that. And so she's very kind, but I'm sure there were some things learned in, in, in that meeting. Just like when I first took over this, I learned some things. But if you, you'll take a look there from the Financial and Business Services, that's from the DPI website. And... Um, kind of where we are and what we have to deal with. As you can see there, um, I'm moving down underneath uh, where it talks about effective July 1, 2013. <clears throat> and by the way, if you look at the bottom, you see where it's, there was changes in, 20, in, in, in 2011. There were also changes in 2012. And we fully expect there to be changes again in the next session. But either way, we, um, as you can see there, it starts out start date no earlier than the Monday, close to August 26th. And you can read through some of those things there. But what I want you to, to gather from that is there are bookends. 
There's an absolute beginning and an absolute ending there. So we have to make this work within, those, within that time frame. And then you can, you can see it also is supposed to cover nine months, uh, the, the, the year, the, the calendar year, uh, excuse me, the school year. Also, as you can see, it says in the next bullet down below, the covering the nine months, it says 185 days, school days, or 1,025 hours. And again, we, that, that language used to say and, or, some are afraid that we'll come back, this legislature will come back and set, put the word and back in there. If so, we'll come back to you and reconvene as we did last April and amend our calendar. But we thought through some of that as we prepared these two calendars. Um, again, school, uh, the teachers have, have to work 215 days. Typically, 10 of those days are annual leave days. 10 of those are holidays. And then 10 of those are work days. Now, there's a couple of notes in here, but because Christmas falls on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, there will be 11 holidays and nine work days. Now, I just want you to, and I know there's some new board members, I just want you to understand kind of where we are and that we do bring together parents. We had Paul joined us at one of our meetings, and um, we, um, we usually enter that with some pretty radical ideas, which is good. And uh, we, it some, it's a very healthy conversation, uh, but I want you to know where we are in putting together uh, a calendar. And as you can see on in, in page 12 in your, in your uh, handout or your packet there, the, the difference is in the two calendars that we've presented to you. I will note that both of those are 180 days because we are well exceed the 1,025 hours in the 180-day calendar with the number of hours we are in school each day for instruction. And that doesn't include travel time, break time, and all that. So we are, we are just fine with the 1,025 hours. So you can, and again, you can see some differences there in option one and option two. A couple things that we try to take a look at is, is preventing um, long stretches of 45 or 50 days without a break. And when I say break, without a work day or without a time to let teachers and students just breathe, to be away from each other. Uh, we did, uh, we have tried to be sensitive to individual schools' needs as far as professional development. So we've built in a few extra early release days and we're designating those specifically for the principals uh, for specific professional development at their school. You can see some of those are required days for staff development, professional development. We worked with the curriculum department to help establish those days as well. And if you recall, the last two, this current year's calendar and the one prior to that, <clears throat> we, we came before you and requested and, and, and we sent Dr. Hartness, apply, um, asked the state to give us a waiver of five days. So we, we've been going to school 180 days but the five days had to be used for professional development, which it, in, in, it, the timing was good because of the common core and the new essential standards. So that's what those days have been used for. And we still have some more into the, in this year. But again, that's not the requirement in the 13-14 calendar. But we're hoping that they will accept our, I hope you approve those calendars, which we will now, once I presented to you, obviously, we'll send this out to the staff to vote on, and once they vote and bring that, inf and I gather that information, I'll come to you with with that uh, information to uh, to make a decision. on. I'll be glad to address any questions or try to entertain any questions or anything that you would like to ask me or point out. And we, we really would love for you to look over it and, and make if you see something that you're not sure about, just please call me or email me. It'd be great. Jeff, where does uh legislators stand in local control of the calendar is that something that you're hearing with your group um, absolutely and, and I, I attend personnel committee meetings personnel statewide personnel meetings monthly and that is always a concern and I know dr. Hartness and you may want to speak to that when with superintendents that I, most everyone I know is screaming from the rooftops let us have it back what can we do as a board what message can we send or do we need to do something special at this time? 
I think as, as always, if you have concerns with the way a law is written, is to talk to the people who are working with other legislatures to create law. So if we have concerns, I would first start with our local representation. Um, I think that this calendar issue will come back up in the long session. So there will be some discussion and there will be some opportunities for our legislators to weigh in. You have to realize that in North Carolina, a lot of this has been driven by uh, economic factors. Um, a lot of the folks at the coast who um, want longer summers have really lobbied to prevent school from starting earlier in August. What I've never been able to understand is if we're still going the same number of days, you're just moving it forward or backward. So you're getting out earlier in May or later in June, going to school earlier in August or later in August. You still have the same length of a summer. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. I, I really would would hope that um, the legislature would come back and revisit this and give more local controls for boards of education to make decisions that best fit the needs of their community. I don't believe that this is an issue that needs to be dealt with in Raleigh. I appreciate, I want to say, I appreciate Jeff heading up a calendar committee and I wanted you guys just to, to get a feel for, I know a lot of people will come to a calendar committee meeting for the first time and say, well, why don't we do this? Can we move this around? Can we move that around? And when you see all the things that are written to the law, it's pretty prescriptive. So you have just a couple days here and there that you have some flexibility in moving back or forth, but it's pretty prescriptive as to what we can and can't do. So um, this, the, the committee has, has formed these two calendars. Again, we'll vote, our, our staff will vote and bring a recommendation to you back in January. Knowing that whatever we approve in January is subject to change if the legislature were to change the calendar law when they come back in session. But this would give our parents an opportunity to go ahead and see when is school starting as they're making vacation plans in the spring for summer. That would give them an idea of, of what they, you know, when school will be starting at least. And board, I want you to know as well that you're the, 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 the faculty, staff, and parents that serve on this committee and Paul can attest to this as well. They are, they are passionate about this. This is not something they just walk in and rubber stamp. They really go through and think about this and we spend two, two afternoons together, but they go back to their schools, work through it, and then come back for the second meeting. So it is, it, they do a wonderful job and I truly enjoy those opportunities to work with our stakeholders in that capacity. So, all right, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. It's now uh, time for comments from the board, and I think, Chad, you're up first. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I first want to say um, thank you for everyone that came out tonight. Now, a lot of the folks are gone, but thanks to the folks that are still here. <laughs> um, I want to congratulate all those who are recognized. It's um, obvious that we've got a lot of hardworking uh, students and staff here in our uh, community, and it, um, it's wonderful to see that. Um, also, I'd like to thank you, Dr. Hartness, for the informative uh, report. Um, and I'm um, glad to hear that the discussions with the architect and staff are moving forward and um, look forward to hearing about those discussions tomorrow at Davy High. Um, and I guess that's about all I have. I uh, hope everyone has a wonderful Christmas holiday. I too want to say thank you to each person who came. I wish the group had stayed a little longer uh, just to thank them for their outstanding work. Uh, we're truly blessed for some many students who go beyond and beyond what a normal student would do for sports and arts and dance and academics. It's, it's so exciting. And as I was sitting here looking at the Christmas cards and watching the young ladies step forward, and the background music, I believe that's the voice of Davy High students also. That right there sends the message that I want to send to everyone tonight. We've worked really hard during this 2012 school year. Changes have taken place. We have moved forward. Great things are happening. There are greater things down the road. I see it. I love the communication, the open communication. I love the idea flow. Everything is moving and it's moving in the correct direction. Over the holiday season, I would like faculty and staff just to slow down and take a breather. You have worked so hard for 2012. It's amazing what's been accomplished. I also would like for our community to stop, 
count their blessings and look around them. And as always, look for hope and peace. And everyone, please have a great holiday season. And Dr. Hartness, thank you for your hard work. Um, I also want to congratulate and thank everyone who came out tonight. For those who stuck around, thank you. <laughs> Uh, it'd be kind of hard to do this to an empty room. So um, when Jeff was talking about uh, the calendar and then earlier when we were talking about just the calendar of events that are upcoming, um, I think as we're moving down this road in terms of looking to get the design and, and price and that type of thing coming in February, I'm wondering if it might be possible to add to our calendar possibly some um, scheduled visits for our community at the high school. Uh, I think it's important for our community to feel like they have that opportunity to, um, to go and see what we're talking about, uh, what we consider to be issues, to where if they hear things in the community as far as, well, that could be fixed or this cannot be fixed, they can go and see for themselves. Um, I know when the board went, um, I think it's, I don't think there's a way to describe it unless you've been there uh, on an administrator-led tour because there are a lot of things that get pointed out that you don't think about because you're not in the, that environment on a day-to-day -day basis. So, um, you know, I'd like to see us look at that maybe at the beginning of the year, being able to organize that something and maybe get the, the paper involved and let the community know. Obviously, it would have to be something that would be limited to a certain number of people. Maybe we could have a registration set up. Uh, I'd like to maybe even see students get involved with that. So that's just something I think would be beneficial for the community. Paul, if I may, we have a, a tour scheduled for December 13th okay. at 9.30. Now, we've not really advertised that, but I, uh, we, it's not th that we can't. I'll uh, for sure talk to Dr. Hartness and, uh, and Ms. Haynes and I. And I have had a few folks, and we do are right. expected to come. But December 13th at 9.30 uh, is a date that Ms. Haynes and I have talked about that will work. So if you're in I'm sorry. I mean, for things like that, if somebody is interested, how do they go about, I mean, how would the community go about finding out if they could come? Or I, I just want people to realize it's not closed off. By no means. And obviously, the, to call me or call Ms. Haynes would either way would be wonderful, which is what's been happening. So we've kind of followed that route. But at the same time, I respect what you're saying as far as communicating those to the public. We've had several people who have requested tours and, and we've accommodated those, but I think developing a schedule that we publish would be much beneficial to the community. And it would also, you know, we want to look at dates that don't conflict with certain events on campus. So I think that's some other request that we could definitely accommodate. We'll look at how we schedule that. Other than that, um, I hope everybody in the room has a, a great end to this year, great Christmas and, um, Looking forward to the new year. Thanks. Several people have commented on how busy the schedule in the world is twirling faster and faster as technology allows it to do so. Uh, like for all of us to be mindful of the, all the blessings that we have, especially the greatest gift that could have ever been given in Jesus Christ. Um, congratulations to the recognized folks tonight, whether it's a student or a worker or whomever it was, uh, wonderful. And <clears throat> hope and pray that everyone has a safe and happy holiday season, Christmas, and New Year's, and see you all next year. Um, short and sweet, thank you, Merry Christmas, and I hope everybody has a good night. I just during the, the training, I look, there's even more opportunities for me to appreciate teachers. But during our training earlier, those of you that weren't here, we were iPad training, and uh, our instructor was up here trying to teach us, and there was chaos <laughs> <clears throat> going on around with uh, adults. And so anyway, I, just, I couldn't help but sit here and just, again, have even more appreciation for what you guys do. Um, so anyway, Merry Christmas and good night. 
I just have a few things to say. Uh, I've been called a lot, but I've never been called a model example of technology. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I'm kind of worried about that, but uh, thank you, Dr. Hartness. Uh, on a more... Yeah, on a, on a more serious note, I wanted to congratulate <clears throat> those that were uh, honored tonight. Uh, uh, we got uh, a lot of wonderful people in this school system, uh, uh, teachers, administrators, uh, students, parents that, that support, uh, support, support our schools every day. And, you know, as we go into this uh, uh, Christmas season, Christmas is a, a very important time of the year, as Paul mentioned, is uh, we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, I just uh, ask that uh, each one of you pray for this board and, and we pray for each other as we move forward. I just want to wish you a blessed and, and a very Merry Christmas. Thanks. Well, I, too, obviously want to congratulate everyone. I think God has just blessed us with just a wonderful place to live, wonderful teachers, parents, students. It was so evident tonight. Thank you to Dr. Hartness for all your leadership. Um, I, I, too, want to wish you all a very safe and um, a, a very peaceful time. As Barbara said, it's, it's a time I think we forget forget just to slow down and really enjoy our families and, and one another. And, and I too would like to concur with Steve. I ask you to pray for us as well, and, and we will for you. Um, so again, Merry Christmas to all of you and a Happy New Year, and we'll see you next year. I would like the public to understand that this is the shortest board meeting that we have ever had. <laughs> Sorry, Marie Convey, we're not going to count the training. That was fun. At this time, I need a motion to adjourn, please. Chad uh, made the motion. Steve seconded. All in favor? 7-0. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs>